Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to today's devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion Daily Fountain Devotional. Today, the 15th day of April, 2024. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you for you are God. We bless your holy name for you are a faithful and a righteous God. Thank you for this opportunity you have given to us to again go through your word. The entrance of your word gives life and it gives understanding to him that is simple. Father, we pray that you teach us, direct us, O Lord, and impact on our lives that all glory might be given unto you and will become just the way you are. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today, we will be looking at the topic, righteousness. Righteousness. We will read from the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. 1 John, chapter 2, and I read from the King James Version. Now, and now little children, Abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Like I earlier said, our topic is righteousness. Righteousness is the state of being right with God. Righteousness is the work of Christ, which is the ground for justification. Righteousness is the quality of being right in the eyes of God, including character, conscience, conduct, and command. Righteousness is therefore based upon God's standard and not man's standard, because God is the ultimate lawgiver. Isaiah 32, verse 22. What I am saying here this morning is that the quality of being right with God must include character, conscience, conduct, and command. Character, I mean that when a person is righteous, the righteousness must reflect in his character. The righteousness must also reflect in his conscience. And conduct, conduct is the way the person carries himself, the way the person behaves, the way the person do things must reflect righteousness. Righteousness must also have to do with your speech. Is your words seasoned with salt? Righteousness. This is just in a way of giving a definition or a theological background to the term righteousness. Our God is a righteous God. There is no unrighteousness in him, as stated in Psalm 92, verse 15. And I quote, he said to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. In Romans chapter 9, verse 14, the Bible said, the author writes and said, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Our God made the earth in righteousness and placed man in it. He placed man in the Garden of Eden. After creating the whole world, he placed man in the Garden of Eden that man will begin to reflect his glory, will begin to show forth that, that, that God attribute, the God kind 
in the Garden of Eden. But man got corrupted by sin or through sin in the Garden of Eden. And that corruption, that falling away, that, that deviation from the standard of God came to God with much pain, which made him to regret in making man. As in Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, this led to the sending away of man from the Garden of Eden, severing the relationship between man and the Holy God. This loving and righteous God immediately began, he began a measure to restore man back to himself because it is not his wish, it is not his will that any should perish, but that man should come back to him in repentance. At the fullness of time, God, in order to restore man to himself, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and pay the ultimate price of sin that was owed by man. God began the plan, began the move to bring man back to himself. And the ultimate of that, that move of restoration came to consummation at the sending of the only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to this world in order to restore man back to God. Jesus did this so that his righteousness, which man lost, can be imputed back, can be given back to man, can be uh, 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 sent into man back, no longer by, by the work or by, by the things that man does, because man has already lost it right from that time in the Garden of Eden. So Jesus came and died so that man can, can now live by the righteousness of Christ. Today, there is this assumption, many people are of the no notion that if, if you do works, people think that works can make one righteous before God. This is a very costly assumption and it's a wrong notion. Many people usually believe that once saved is forever saved, no matter what you do, that, that it does not matter anymore. But that is a very wrong notion. No man is counted righteous before God by his own works. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9, and I quote, Say, not of works, lest any man should boast. In verse 8, before verse 9 of that same Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible said that, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of of God. Jesus Christ is the gift of God given to man in order to restore man back to God, not by the righteousness of man, but by that one that has already been done by Christ. So, it is not by our works that we are made righteous before God, but by the righteousness of Christ which has been imputed to us by grace and our faith in him that makes us righteous before God. Praise the Lord. It makes us righteous before God. So it is not by work. It is by our faith in Jesus. It's when we we'll align ourselves to the finished work of Christ on the cross that we become that which God expects from us to become. Praise God. Anyone that has given his or her life to Christ genuinely should have this great confidence, the confidence that he or she is righteous before God. It is no longer by your work. It is by the finished work of Christ that we are righteous. Therefore, people of God, if Christ's righteousness has been imputed in us, just as it is clearly stated on this devotion this morning, we must continually abide. We must abide in him, knowing that he will come back one day, someday, a day is coming. Christ will come back. He will return back. He will come to take his, his own back to himself. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, the first verse of this devotion, he said, And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. 
we must abide. We must remain. We must continue to do those things that will make us to remain in him so that at his return, we will not be ashamed. We must not live our lives in such a way that we become ashamed of his return. Verse 29, if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. The scripture in the book of Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, from verse 28. Permit me to read Romans 1, 28 to 31. You are going, we are going to, from this scripture, see clearly the unrighteous acts, those things that when you do them, you become ashamed, ashamed at his return. Romans chapter 1 from verse 28. I read. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Verse 1. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. So, if you look at this particular scripture, you will see that those unrighteous acts, there are unrighteous acts that if a Christian, if a child of God gets himself involved in them, he becomes ashamed of God. Even God will become ashamed of such, such person. There are actions that should not be mentioned in the midst of God's people. And what are those actions? As clearly stated in Romans, he said, wickedness. Wickedness. You should not be a child of God and you are still full of wickedness. You should not be a child of God and you are st still committing fornication and adultery, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, and all those kind as listed in Romans chapter 1 from verse 28 as read. You cannot... Because the righteousness of Christ has been imputed in you. You need to abide in that righteousness. You need to remain in the righteousness that Jesus has, has already completed. Remaining in him for us not to be ashamed at his return. In Romans chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible clearly states that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And this wrath of God is revealed against these persons that hold the truth in unrighteousness. How can you be a child of God, hold the truth of the gospel and still practicing unrighteousness? No. Our God is a righteous God. And anyone that must serve him must remain, must abide in the finished work of Christ on the cross. The scripture also states in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, it says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to a people. Sin is a reproach. Unrighteousness is a reproach. Unrighteousness will make you cover your head in shame. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to a people. In Proverbs 13, verse 6, and I quote, said, Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. You cannot be righteous and at the same time wicked. Righteousness keeps that one, that one that is upright in the way. We need to remain righteous. In Psalm 85, verse 13, the scripture says, Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. It is the righteousness that keeps us in the way of his steps. Dear people of God, let us abide 
in this righteousness that has been imputed in us by the finished work of Christ on the cross, by doing the works of righteousness. There are works of righteousness. Philippians chapter 1 from verse 10 and 11. The Bible says that ye may approve things that are excellent. Things that are excellent are fruits of righteousness. That ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. We really need to allow the fruits of righteousness, the fruits of righteousness that is found in Jesus to remain in us. What are the fruits of righteousness? Love. What are the fruits of righteousness? Peace. What are the fruits of righteousness? Godliness. What are the fruits of righteousness? Kindness, meekness. What are those things you find in the Holy Spirit? These are fruits of righteousness. And these fruits should abide in us. Forgiveness, tender mercies. They should be the fruits that, that, are, that, that should be found in us. Let us remain. V v verse 10 said that ye may approve things that are excellent. Things that are excellent are fruits of righteousness. It is my prayer that as you listen to this message this morning, the fruits of righteousness will abide in you. You will produce those fruits fruits that 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 glorifies god fruits that draw men to the kingdom of god fruits that enlarges the kingdom of god make the kingdom of god to become that which god expects from our hands the fruits of righteousness and they must be unto the glory and praise of god when we remain in the fruit of righteousness we are born of god for whoever that doeth righteousness is born of god Whoever that doeth righteousness, hallelujah. You must do righteousness. You must remain in Christ. You must eschew any kind of things that does not glorify God and remain in righteousness. And make sure, make sure that you abide so that we will not be ashamed that is returned. So that we will not cover our, shame, our faces in shame at his return. So that we will not be abandoned at his return. So that we will, we will grow in him and grow in grace. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. Sin is a destroyer. Sin is a praise us. Remember where I began, I said that when man, Adam, fell into sin, the relationship he enjoyed before was separated. He was separated from the loving God. And thank God for the gifts of Jesus Christ. Jesus came that the righteousness of God may be imputed back in us. And for us to, to, to have our place in God, we must remain in this righteousness of Christ. And continue to bear the fruits of righteousness so that he will not be ashamed so that he will not be ashamed at his return, at the return of Christ, when he comes to harvest and take his people back to himself. May he not be ashamed of us. May Christ not cover his face in shame. But may the righteousness that he has been imputed in us, this fruit that has been, that has been planted in us, may it remain in us and make us to appear before him in boldness. Let us be confident. And not be ashamed of him at his return. And the only way we cannot be ashamed at his return is when we remain in love. When we remain in peace. When we remain in, in brotherly, brotherly love. When we, when, when we do those acts that glorify God. And eschew acts that does not glorify God. Let us remove every seed and every atom of unrighteousness in our walk with Christ and Christ will be glorified in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may we continually count your righteousness imputed upon us as a great treasure. May we, O oh God, remain in this treasure and not move out of your program and plan for our lives. May the righteousness of Christ abide and remain in us. And may we bring forth these fruits, even as we have heard from you. Help us to live as one born of you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Have a nice day.
We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.